seven lurking in the waters. More on that later. But first, the plane wreck that everybody's talking about. This is all that's left of adventurer Steve Fawcett's plane. The mangled wreck was found in Madera County, California, near a peak in the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Fawcett has been missing since September 2007 when he took off in a single-engine Balanca plane and never returned. At the crash site, airplane debris is spread out over 120 meters in all directions, suggesting the plane smashed into the mountain and hard. This is what Madera County Sheriff John Anderson had to say about the scene. It appeared to me, just looking at the pictures, that it was a head-on crash into the side of a mountain, into a rock. The plane moved up in an upward direction for 100 feet or so uh, and disintegrated. The engine was found about 300 feet farther than the fuselage and the, and the wings. Mark Miller is Daily Planet's aviation expert, and he's here to shed some light on what might have happened. Mark, uh, what can you tell us about the area where the plane was found? Well, anybody has flown in that area, and there is a lot of traffic that goes through that general aviation, California to Arizona, Nevada. That's very, very high country in there, uh, those peaks 10, 12,000 feet. And you've got the desert on one side, so it's very hot. You've got lots of rising turbulent air, and uh, it can be very, very rough. In fact, uh, the day after the crash, or the day after Mr. Fawcett went missing, they actually had to call off the search because uh, the, the weather was, was so sort of rough, or the air was so rough, uh, airplanes couldn't fly and couldn't search. It was just simply too dangerous. This is the kind of air, the kind of turbulence that can break airplanes up and, and, uh, and basically, you know, tr trigger accidents because of in-flight breakup. And obviously, whenever you're flying in, in high altitude and heat, density altitude is a consideration, uh, particularly for single-engine pilots. Uh, what can you tell us about the conditions that day? Well, it was a hot day. It was clear air, but it was a hot day. And, uh, you know, as the day progresses, uh, you get sort of more buildup, the risk of thunderstorms. I believe there was a thunderstorm later in the day. Mr. Fawcett took off about 8.45 in the morning. He had five hours of fuel on board his super decathlon. Uh, we don't know if he landed somewhere, you know, maybe put down in one of the dry lake beds and had lunch. Uh, and later in the day, perhaps, he was trying to pick his way back home. The problem with density altitude is the higher you go in an airplane, the hotter it is, the less molecules there are in the air to sort of create lift in airplanes. And there have been lots of accidents. In fact, one I can remember here in British Columbia near Penticton on a particularly hot day where a beaver, a very powerful airplane, failed to outclimb a ridge here and he clipped the top of it and uh, he sort of you know, crashed maybe 400 feet from clearing the ridge. Thought he could clear it, couldn't, and uh, simply flew into the rocks. And, you know, that's a, that's a possibility the NTSB will look at in this accident. Yeah, certainly a CFIT accident, one of the major causes of uh, single engine or uh, all general aviation uh, crashes. That's con controlled flight into terrain. And by the uh, debris scattering here, of course, we're just speculating, but it certainly looks like con controlled flight into terrain. There's certainly no indication here of an in-flight breakup, Ed, you're right. Uh, the, uh, if the wreckage was scattered over a much larger area, uh, you, would start to, you would start to track where the flight breakup was. The pieces furthest away from the main part of the wreckage along the sort of flight path would indicate how that airplane broke up. If you found the tail back three miles, you know that the breakup started at the tail, and from that, they can sort of reconstruct what the airplane might have been doing. There's one interesting thing here. This airplane was likely carrying a GPS, and there have been accidents in the past where investigators have been able to go into that GPS system, retrieve the last few data points, and those data points would include time of day, altitude, speed. Um, they could start to reconstruct at least the last few seconds of this flight, which might help answer a lot of these questions. We don't even know what time the accident happened at, so we don't know if we're dealing with the hottest part of the day. We don't know if this happened uh, shortly after he left the ranch in the airplane. It might have happened at 9.45 in the morning. Now, we know the plane uh, was equipped with an ELT, an emergency locator transmitter. But why do you think the beacon uh, did not go off? Uh, you know, there are cases where ELTs have failed after really, really violent accidents. I know we had a look at some of those pictures, and it appears that this was uh, probably a non-survivable accident, so he wouldn't have been able to trigger that himself. Uh, the ELT is uh, triggered, the emergency locator transmitter is triggered by basically G-forces. Uh, impact causes a switch to go off inside the ELT, 
which starts to transmit. But there are cases where an airplane hits the ground or hits uh, terrain so hard that the ELT simply is destroyed and fails. The other interesting thing here is Mr. Fawcett was wearing a uh, very, very unique, specially designed watch uh, that contained an ELT as well. And that watch by Breitling required a person, though, to manually trigger it. So again, uh, one of the questions was always, why was the ELT not triggered on his watch or in the airplane? We may have an explanation now just by looking at the pictures of that wreckage. Right, Mark. Well, uh, thank you for your time today, and uh, thanks for your expertise on the situation. All right, Ed, thanks. Mark Miller is Daily Planet's aviation expert, and he joined us today from Vancouver, British Columbia. Wow, Ed, I can't believe it's been a year, and they've only just found everything. It's actually not that peculiar. I mean, it's pretty remote territory. Uh, I actually had a plane crash recently where I was the pilot, and uh, I told people specifically where the plane was. Luckily, my results were much better. No one was injured. But uh, even telling people where the plane was, people couldn't spot it from the air. Amazing. So it, it, it's not peculiar at all. It's a fascinating story. Absolutely. Mm. And from trying to track a downed plane to how transmitters are being used in science to track living creatures, you've probably heard about